All right, everybody, look at this face. This is affection for my dear Amy, Amy Horak. Hi, Amy. Hi. Oh man, we're so we're in it. This is gonna. This is day five of the Daniel fast, and I wanted to just have Amy share a few things of what's bubbling up inside of her. What's bubbling up inside of you, Amy, um, during this fast? That's current, real, relevant that would inspire folk. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's been it's been good thus far. Um, definitely. Uh, definitely have experienced. Um, some effects. <laughs> yeah. Again, like some, for example, um, give us an example. Yeah. Day one, definitely some fatigue and definitely some um, caffeine withdrawal. Yeah. yeah just kind of a, that dull kind of headache. And even for me, I think it's really humbling and beautiful as I fast. I, I realized, you know, I mean, with my kids, with my husband, with myself, um, even like my daughter's gymnastics coach, I, ha I had this, I could feel this stripping in the spirit realm, like day one, it's starting like the stripping and I'm feeling like this, um, okay, the props are, <laughs> and I am going to be, uh, in a sense, it's not striving, but intentional and purposeful about staying in the spirit, about mm -hmm. staying in the flow of the spirit, because I, I would feel this irritation rising up or just like a, yeah, just a sense of, um of um i don't have some of the some of the things that maybe would normally help um smooth out and it's good i i'm yielding to it i'm humbled by it i'm surrendering to it and i'm thanking the lord for it yeah. um but it's real it, and it's real so it's good you know yeah. it's good but yeah even yesterday there was a there was a couple different times where i repented um to my kids <laughs> i repented to my husband i was like mommy is not that wasn't <laughs> That was not the mommy that I am called to be and am choosing to be when that came out, you know, a little short, a little irritated. So, yep. Yeah. So it's good. So here we are. We're in the fast and it's, yeah. Well, we're a, we're a, a treasure in an earthen vessel and, yeah. and our earthen vessels are colliding with the treasure. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. The, but the treasure is expanding, the treasure being Jesus and the influence of the Holy Spirit. So what's yeah. God saying to you right now? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been really good. Um, but even leading up to the fast, uh, the Lord was highlighting to me and it was so interesting because when we, we did the panel together, um, at Rock Laramie on Sunday morning, you opened up with Matthew 17 and that was the very Matthew 17. It's also found in Mark nine was the very, um, sort of scripture area that the Lord had been highlighting to me and has continued to as, as the fast has gone, has progressed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the story where, you know, Jesus comes down from the Mount of Transfiguration and is immediately confronted by um, a father with a demon possessed boy. And the, and, and the demon possessed, the father says, can you look at my son? He's been possessed since he was a child. It throws him in the fire. He foams at the mouth. I brought him to your disciples and your disciples could do nothing about it. Right. And Jesus says, um, okay, bring the boy to me. And he, he immediately casts out the demon. Now, in between that, the father says to Jesus, um, if you can do anything to help me. And Jesus says, if I can. And the father, he said, all things are possible for those who believe. Yeah. And, and then the father says, I do believe, help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Jesus casts out the demon. Then later, the disciples come to Jesus and say, why couldn't we cast out the demon? Because recall, Jesus had already given them all authority to cast right. out demons and to, to be his representative on his conduit on earth. And he said, why can't we fast out the demons? And Jesus says, because you have so little faith. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, go and be cast into the sea. And he said, but this time, this kind comes out by pr only by prayer and fasting. Right. So I really was meditating on that. Okay, Jesus, what are you saying to me in this? What is, what is this? What are you saying to me? And it's so interesting. You know, when you look at that, when you look at that um, parable, what does the father identify as the problem? The demon. Right. What does the disciples identify as the problem? The demon. What does Jesus identify as the problem? Unbelief. Right. Wow. Come and on. So, there are these giants of unbelief in my life 
that I have, I have had, I have, I have all authority in heaven and earth. I am the daughter of the King. And there, yet there are these giants, these areas that the things of this world, the circumstance has felt more real to me than the authority that's been imparted into me as a wow. daughter. And the invitation has been to me in this season of prayer and fasting, Amy, what I am doing to you in the spirit realm is that you are choosing to lay aside the things of the world, the temporal. You're choosing to become anchored in the things of the eternal by setting aside some meat, some caffeine, some media, you know, all the things, the sugar, that whatever, alcohol. I don't drink alcohol on a normal basis anyway. But and in so doing, you are becoming more hungry for the unseen than the seen realm. Because what does what does unbelief operate in? It operates in what you can see. Fear Perfect. and unbelief. Fear and unbelief is bred by what I can see. It's bred by this world. Well, what is what is faith operate in? It operates in the unseen. So in the simple act of choosing to skip a meal, of choosing to, to lay aside the desirable things of this world, I am becoming more hungry for the unseen realm than the seen realm. And that is the life of faith. And that is where the giants don't stand a chance because I discover who he is, therefore who I am, and therefore my authority as a daughter of the king to take down the giants. Ooh. And so that is really just, I mean, daily. So for me, I'll just give you one example. My heart aches for Gen Z. My heart aches for Gen Alpha, for my daughters. Gen Alpha is the next one you start over again. That's my daughters are 11, 9, and 6. My heart aches for the assault on their identity, on their destiny, on, the, on who they are called to be in this world. And they are growing up in a world where they are being assaulted assaulted on every level, spirit, mind, body, soul, identity, and the devil wants to annihilate this generation. And so that's my mountain of unbelief, where I look at my daughters and I say, wow, God, my heart is aching for that generation. My heart is aching for the, 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 the Gen Z, the Flynn's of, this, of, of, of our nation. And the Lord is saying, Amy, as you humble yourself, as you set aside the desirable, as you choose to gaze on me and the hung and your spirit man grows and you become, become more hungry for the unseen than than what you are bombarded with in the seen realm because it's real the, oh, yeah. the, the, the um the clash in the spirit realm is real mm. and if i only look at the at, at what my eyes can see there's cause for grave concern and the lord said i want you to there are seasons and there are times amy when I'm calling you to skip a meal, set aside something desirable and realize the problem isn't the demon. The problem is the unbelief. And I have equipped you to sit with me, let your hunger grow and therefore your ability to discern and see all that I have purchased in the spirit realm and who you and stepping into that place of who I've called you to be and in, from that place, that's where the, the things of the authority, the substance of the authority of who he's called us to be in Christ begins to manifest. And we can change a lost and dying world. Him through us, is, it has the ability to affect a lost and dying world. So that's where this fast has been for me. I have deep things in my heart, deep longings. The Lord called me. He said, I gave you three daughters and I've called you to raise regal women. I said, God, they... We don't even, people can't even define what a woman is in our culture. People can't even tell you what a woman is. It's like, oh, it's what I choose, you know. And the Lord is saying, no, anchor yourself in the, in the unseen realm, the life of faith, the substance of faith. As you fast, you're expanding, expanding your hunger and appetite, not for the temporal, but for the eternal. And as you do, it becomes clearer who I am, therefore who you are, therefore how we will relate and bring the kingdom on the earth in this day and age. And I get excited about that. I get hopeful about that. And I want to encourage everyone who's watching. Mm -hmm. There are post COVID, we have been living in what statistics are saying is the most hopeless generation in many, many, many generations. And we all have giants of unbelief. We all have Goliaths that are taunting us. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you that as you lay aside a meal, 
as you or you you know give up your what you what the Lord has called you to give up in this fast and you set aside the entertainment the athletics the the desirable food all the things that satiate our flesh and you begin to let that your flesh die off a bit you know like I was talking about day one like <laughs> you know and you let your you begin to become more hungry for the unseen than the things of this world the Lord will meet you in that place and I encourage you to sit with him and identify where are the areas where I have hope sickness, hope deferred that my heart is sick. And where are the areas that I have unbelief that the things of the seen world be, are more real to me than what you purchased on the cross. And I, I encourage you to offer that up to him as a living sacrifice and to say, God, this is the area. This is the realm where I want to see you move. This is the realm where I want to see my identity be firmly, securely established um, in this season as we journey together, as I fall more in love with you. Because I got to tell you, my goal is to be more in love with Jesus at the end of this than mm -hmm. I am right now. That is my goal, is that uh, to become more fascinated with Jesus, that the that he, he that I'm protecting the burn, that I'm fanning the flame, mm -hmm. that I'm purchasing oil. All of these things are what is going to um, enable me to see him rightly and see myself rightly and therefore see the world rightly. Oh, man, Amy. Pray right now, Amy. This is so fiery and profound. It's what you're saying is that in that third heaven realm, that grace place, that unseen, we're seated with Christ in the heavenly place. There is enough grace that if mm. we access that grace by faith, faith yeah. is the accessing of grace and, and releasing it onto the earth, that that is where how we overcome yeah. these, mm -hmm. these demonic principalities that are lying to this generation. But it's yeah. going to take a miracle. It's going to take a, literally a, an invasion of heaven to earth, which we become the conduit of. And that's it. I, I feel that we are called to be to be the ones that say, I'll set. OK, I don't have, I don't want to go into this too far because of our time constraint. But I believe that he's calling the 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 parents, the Gen Xers, the millennials and the and the boomers to say, I will stand in the gap. I will set aside the, the desirable, just like Daniel did. He set aside that which is desirable. And, and the word says, in so doing, he became greatly desirable. And that's what maturity does. If I only have enough in the budget to buy Christmas presents for the kids and not the adults, I'm going to buy Christmas presents for my kids because I'm going to go without that they would have. Right. And that's what I think the invitation is, is to in the heavenly realm say, I'm going to choose to humble myself, go low, stand in the gap and pull down the 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 grace the breakthrough the unseen realm and walk in the authority that he has um made available those nine disciples had the authority to cast out that demon but it only comes out through prayer and fasting in that moment jesus neither prayed nor fasted but he had put in a lifestyle of saying i'm more anchored in the unseen realm than the seen realm yeah he had a that lifestyle of prayer and fasting yeah. he had a lifestyle of, of course he started his ministry with a fast and a prayer exactly so, Amy, pray. Pray yeah. right now. This is a biggie. Yeah. So, Jesus, we I want to just agree with Tim and, my, and our brothers and sisters right now, Lord, that you um, are jealous for this generation. You are jealous for Gen Z. You are jealous for Gen Alpha. And you are jealous for every son and daughter of God that is living um, in this day and this age. And that you are jealous for us to know you and to know who you've created us to be and to be conduits of the king, of advancing the kingdom of God under the authority of Jesus to a lost and dying world. And we believe Lord by faith that as we are setting aside this season to be holy unto you, it's not business as usual, it's consecrated. We ask that it be a pleasing aroma to you, Jesus, and that we're not earning brownie points with you. We're simply becoming more hungry for the, the things of the spirit to manifest on earth as it is in heaven. So we say kingdom of God come, will of God be done on earth in each of our individual lives and in this nation and the generations on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus name. Amen. Oh, in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much, Amy. That was incredible. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much. It's good to be with you. Wow. Okay, everybody. See you tomorrow.